open up to, to you guys if you have any remarks or any questions at all. Um, and if you like, I would like to start a conversation actually with an image. It's an image I found in an edition of Cahiers du Cinema. I don't, I'm not sure if you still remember it. And it's an image that quite touched me. Um, for a certain edition, Cahiers du Cinema asked uh, several filmmakers to share a moment, to share an emotion that keeps on resonating with, uh, with those filmmakers. And you chose uh, an image of, um, of Misael, uh, who is the, 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 your partner, that you, the boy you filmed in your first film. And there's something that touched me in, in what you wrote about it. You said that uh, this smile, uh, the smile in, in this image, which is actually from a scene that was not in the, the, the final cut of the film, that it accompanies you everywhere, uh, even uh, during the, the shooting of Hoja, because uh, this was uh, the time of, of the, you were finishing Hoja. And I was wondering if this, uh, this emotion that comes with shooting a film, this, this emotion of uh, exchange, of uh, companionship, of, uh, of sharing, if, if this is really a, uh, still is a driving force for you for, to, to make films, this, this, this idea of, of, uh, of encounter, of, of sharing this experience of filmmaking, is, is this really one of the important things for you to make films? Yes, uh, I mean, the, the image that you are referring to is, is about the main character of my first film. It, it's the last, I mean, it's a guy just looking into the camera and he laughed for three minutes. <laughs> and. Uh, that was my first experience as a filmmaker. I, I, I don't even have a previous experience, not even as, as a, to shoot a short film or something. And I discovered this this guy, his name is Misael. He was working in my father's farm as a woodcutter. And uh, once I finish, sorry, I just go and fly with ideas. You know? <laughs> And then, so I, I stopped cinema after the school, and I went back to the to the farm of my family to work as a kind of farmer, you know, doing things with tractors and, and cows and everything. And I discovered this guy just in a very isolated way in the middle of the forest, and I just approached to him and I start talking, and I feel very like him, mm. even if I came from the big city as Buenos Aires. And I feel the, the the same sensibility, or I feel the same way, uh, and and then I decided to ask him. He was never, he never went to the cinema before this film. He lives in the middle of the forest with a tent and with an axe, and I asked him, "Do you mind if 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 I if we can we make a film about you, about your life?" He looked at me and he didn't know what to say because I don't know what the film is about. But uh, then I, I started traveling to the farm and I spent like eight months without going back and forth from Buenos Aires to La Pampa where I shoot the film. And suddenly he says, okay, let's do it. And we shot that film in 10 days with friends. It's, it's kind of film school. But then I realized that it's, it is a strange film because at that time, we are talking about 2001, most of the people that are my teachers or books or, or, or things that I saw in magazines, they were talking about the difference between fiction and documentary films. And I didn't, I think it, I didn't pay attention that much to that. And so I decided, I, I make, I'm just giving giving you uh, an explanation about why this guy is laughing at the end because I thought that if I shoot this guy laughing to the cam straight to the camera people will think that he really knew everything about well, what we were doing, you know, shooting a film. And it was also a kind of, uh, of I don't know, a kind of uh, uh, maybe I was uh, more insecure at that time, and I thought if I made uh, like a boring film, I will laugh at your face. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like that. I don't know if you get my idea, but uh, well, I remember that fa that that smile uh, a lot. And I, and when we made this film with another actor like Bill Mortensen, which is hundred years away from Misael, uh, I feel the same 
kind of energy just going to a, a place where I cannot uh, really be in charge, you know. I feel the same energy about I didn't know what to do because I, I, I never shoot with professional actors before and I have the energy about not knowing what the film is going to be about, you know. Uh, and if you ask me nowadays, <laughs> now, what the, this film is about, probably I, I will not have only one answer, but uh, I like I like films like that when I feel like very insecure about what the film is about. For this film, it took you quite a while to compose the team, to compose the crew, and then you worked with you worked with a, a new co-writer, you worked with a new DP, with Hugo Mortensen, of course. Did you feel the necessity to have uh, like fresh ears and fresh eyes to accompany you on, on, on the shooting of this film? The, the previous film I made before this one, it was in 2008, it was uh, it, it is Liverpool and then I st stopped and I started to re restart to think about what kind of people should I work with and then I get married and, I, and then kids and everything I, and I had the time to, to, to ask myself, okay, maybe you, you have the chance to work with people that you really admire, so to work with uh, a DOP like Timo, the Finnish guy who works with uh, Kaurismaki, and to call Vigo. In some of my travels to film festivals, I met Vigo. Vigo lives in Argentina, so he speaks perfect Spanish, and he knows very well the Patagonia and everything. And I thought, okay, wow, this guy, the Lord of the Rings, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then, but then I said, okay, why not? Uh, and then I started to write with Fabian Casas, which is a poet, which is very close friend of Vigo in Argentina, because Vigo goes often to Argentina to see his favorite team of football, you know, which is San Lorenzo. <laughs> and he's a great fan about San Lorenzo. I don't pay much attention about soccer. And then I start, uh, I send, we sent him the script and he takes like two years to, to, to decide about if he was good for the character or not. And Viggo Mortensen has, has described the sets of this film as a kind of a cooperative, kind of poetic cooperative, his, his words. And so this, he, he focuses on the, the sense of, of uh, solidarity amongst the crew members. Is it important for you this this sense of openness uh, to keep to keep uh, all the possibilities open during the, the film the film shooting? Yeah, my, uh, my script is it doesn't have more than twenty pages, yeah. but then so it, that gives you space for you to shoot something else mm. apart from the script. But in in, in this case particularly, uh, Vigo apart uh, or, or create some scenes or the or the sound director suggests me some other scenes for the f for example this the first scene of the film it was not in the script it's something that my the sound director just told me he said why don't you shoot something like this and i just went to big and i said big what do you think hey let me write something and that was that's that was the way it happens you know so but but that happened probably because I, I'm working with the same crew for more than 15 years. For example, Ilse Hogan, which is my producer from Holland, is there and we're still working together and we have our next project you know, coming. And it, it's kind of a friends and family or something like that. But uh, so mo most of the crew don't even read the script. They just show me a map and they ask me, where are we going? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, they trust the idea about this kind of team shooting something. You mentioned that the script was never more than twenty pages, and that goes for all the films that that you have made. So, what what is what is the the process of writing the script for you? Is is that kind of putting your ideas on on paper? Is it is it the guy, the first guy? Or? The first that I choose is a a, a, a location, mm -hmm. and then I travel to the place. And I stay there, even if no one is there. I I go there with my car and in my tent, and I stay for I don't know a week, a days, 
sometimes more. I take a lot of pictures. I go back to Buenos Aires, stay with my family, I travel again. So then when, I, when I'm in those places, I start to think an excuse to shoot those places and I need to include some characters, you know? And so then I start to realize some kind of little, little minimal conflict, not even conflict, situation, you know? In order to shoot what I most like to see about the places, because I, sometimes I, I think that I don't trust the matching world, so sometimes I feel that the place can can show me more about the people than the people itself. Mm. You know, from from the places where we shoot, I think people is living there and and they don't know how to how to express their feelings or communicate or or you know they they, they are kind of different they they, they don't choose uh, dialogue or words in order to express themselves and sometimes because they don't they don't go to school or they don't know how to read or they don't know how to process ideas in order to convince the other one to do something different you know so in this film there's a bit more dialogue than in your previous film and I know you tend to shy away from discourse, I know you tend to shy away from the, from the verbal. Was it hard for you to overcome this suspicion in regards to words? And, and Actually not really because I, start, I really trust the, the, the better job that I can do is to choose the right people. I thought it can make something not unique, but something more unique for for the film itself, for the unique way of being of this film. You know, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm not clear enough, but yeah, no. But of, of all the films you made, I guess they were about journeys, and with, with this journeys is far more fractured yeah. uh, than, than your previous film, which were more linear, let's say, or more yeah. more circular. Was it a conscious choice to, to look for another yeah, narrative? I think that or? came from the, the from the screen, right? The, from the script. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of originally. It was a choice. Yeah, for example, I mean, I remember when when Fabian told me, "What about if we can we can start the film with the with dogs in in a in una veterinaria? I don't know how to say veterinaria, but it's a, a place where doctors fought animals. You know, veterinary, veterinary." Okay, something like that. So, <laughs> sorry about my English. But, uh, and then I, I, I just asked Fabian, why, wh why don't we go and shoot in Denmark, in a castle and something different to give a, 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 another approach of image and time and space and, 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 and give, a, uh, uh, give another point of view to this kind of, uh, you know, people who arrive and, you know, 100 years before in our place. And then we go, and for example, this, that scene, the, the scene that you just saw in the castle, in the script, w was the first scene. But it didn't work that well, so I just decided to move it at the end. And it's a, it's a kind of freestyle, discovering the film during you are shooting and editing and feeling and having a sensation about the characters and who is who and what the film is about and you know. Yeah. This, uh, this, this free-floating form, as you call it, this constant mutation, it somehow reminded me of a bit of, uh, of David Lynch, it's pro probably a an obvious uh, reference, but then uh, I, uh, I wrote or I read in your uh, Carte Blanche program mm. that uh, he is becoming more and more important for you, that he is becoming more and more of an influence for you. I think he's a great influence for m more than I, for many people nowadays, because he, he has still this kind of sense of uh, creative mm, nonsense uh, image and sound and create an atmosphere in the audience about not even about what the film should be about, but he's a kind of uh, he's looking for some aesthetic uh, pleasure. It's more like a painting, like a more from narrative. If you can see the last show he made for Netflix, uh, you, you, you Twin Peaks? yeah, Twin Peaks yeah. is uh, it's like very very weird for for Netflix series, you know. 
but I, I, I love that kind of uh, freedom in terms of uh, what a film should be. So that's why I'm very curious to see his first film here because I, yeah, I never had the chance to, to watch it. Razor Heads, you mean? Yeah. yeah. And is that is that an exploration you want to continue yourself in, in, in the work that you're doing now? This this interlacing of different times, of different dimensions? Of yes, probably it's more... If I had to be honest, I, I, I don't have any, any direction that, that I know previous to shoot my film. I, 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 I have so many influences from so many different things, directors or not directors or any other kind of people who create things like a carpenter or whatever thing. But the cinema is like, for me, it's, it's, many times I, I feel like when, when you ask that kind of question, it's, it's only me who is making the decisions. And in cinema, there's so many people around me who make uh, their own decision and they have their own influence that you can for example in this film some some critics told me okay this is kind of the searcher which is in the program that I didn't see from John Ford and I say no well actually it, it, I didn't I never saw the searchers but maybe for sure the, the DOP saw it and so he framed in a way that maybe you you feel some reference to that film so but it's, it's not only what I'm trying to say it's not only me you know, there's 15 people trying to, to, to put something in the image and the sound that they, has, they have their own influence. Yeah. So I'm the director I know, but uh, sometimes you, you just uh, trust that guy and you don't ask why. Yeah. Just <clears throat> let him go, you know. In, in, in that regard, what, what was the, the input of someone like Vio Mortensen, because, uh, you, like you said, you, you, in the previous work you, you worked with non-professional actors, many of whom had never been to the cinema before, or hardly. Um, so was it a different way of working for you? Because as you mentioned, you're someone who likes to observe and, and, and well, step back. And I remember the first scene that we showed with Vigo is the one that he's, uh, he's uh, walking, climbing the, the mountain and goes to where his daughter is in the film after 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And before we shoot that, I, I just ask for a minute and I, I run to him and I say, okay, Vigo, what should I say to the actors? You know, what you mean, Lissandro, I'm an actor. They, you shouldn't say that to me one minute before we start. And I say, no, 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 forget, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not paying attention to you. I'm thinking about the girl because the girl never acted in his life, you know. So can you tell me something? And he was like, oh, man. But okay, just if you like the the, the scene, just say it's, it's good. If you, if you don't like it, say it's good, but let's make one more. You know, <laughs> that's all the the communication that we share with Vigo. And then I think, what can I say to Vigo? I think Vigo already has how he interpreted his character. I mean, I'm I'm just you know a guy who is not going to give him any direction. Even if he's super, super, super absorbed anything that I can say or Fabian can say uh, about his character, but uh, he's, he's, he's a machine, he's kind of really great machine about giving you support mm. in every sense, before the film and after the film. He was there always. Mm. So, and sometimes even when we finish the films, he travels probably more to film festivals than I, presenting the film. And I said to him, why, why you are you going to, you know? And he told me, okay, if I'm not going, I mean, I make this film to give you a chance to show your work. If I'm not going there, nobody's gonna, I mean, the film is already strange, so <laughs> you need an extra support, you know? <laughs> and I think he was honest, you know? Yeah. But so he really gets involved with the film. Yeah. And he also provided a, a piece of music. He, he worked yeah, on the score, he, but he got some music, some guitars that he created with this crazy guy from U.S. Uh, Butterhead, no, Boogerhead, Boogerhead. Yeah. yeah, it's a crazy guitar player, which is very crazy. But if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time you use music in the film. Normally, it's all in the, the previous films was only in the beginning or in, in the end. So what, what does mm. what function does music take for you in? It's, it's, I think most of the music is in this nocturnal, nocturnal, nocturnal scene, this night scene, yeah. where we see his character lying down. Yeah. So what, what function does it take? What, what, 
why did you decide to put music there? I just thought that I needed trans, uh, a transition between between that night and what it coming what it comes next, which is everything is get gets really more strange. You know, everything starts again with this kind of old woman and the dog and the landscape and the freezing and the rain and we don't know where we are. So I thought that if we can create something through music and the night and he's sleeping, maybe he died, maybe not, maybe he's dreaming, maybe not. I thought that music was a, a good, uh, a good tool to take me to this other next coming step in the film. And I asked him, do you have some music that, that I can hear? And he, he, he just sent me some CDs and, and I choose two of them, the, the credits one and, the, and, and, the, and that scene that you mentioned. And in the other films, the one who is in charge about the music is the sound director, which is a brother for me. He's the, one, the only one that I co-direct something in my life, uh, Catriel, and I think because he really knows me and knows the atmospheres and he's in the, in, the, in, in the shooting and he's in the previous, the shooting, the pre-shooting and everything, I just asked him, okay, can you make me some music for the film? And whatever, whatever thing he brings is in the film, mm -hmm. so I, I don't ask that much. It's true that that scene is kind of turning point. I remember when I saw this film the first time, I thought that that was the end uh, because of the music also partly. Yeah. It felt like an end and then a new beginning. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah, it feels like, okay, this guy is lost and dying and then we start again a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then we start again a little bit. It's like a three different endings or not, you know. Because I, I don't know, can, can I ask any question or should I What's talk that? about it like for? <laughs> Buenas tardes. Eh, una película me pareció magnífica. It's going to be a, a, a microphone, sorry. Ah. La, la película me pareció magnífica. Gracias. Eh, al verla no podía sino recordar a unas cuantas obras literarias de la tradición argentina. Estaba especi pensando especialmente en la cautiva, en el Facundo, en el Martín Fierro. O sea, esas obras literarias que han moldeado el imaginario cultural argentino. O sea, usted decía, yo podría decir que esta, que esta obra está a propósito de muchas cosas, está también a propósito de muchos aspectos de la memoria cultural argentina. ¿no? ¿Cómo lo ve usted la relación de la película con la literatura? Que me parece una película muy literaria. Chao, contesto en qué? En cristiano. En cristiano. So the, the question was maybe, uh, what's the link between your film and the literature, Argentine literature? Yeah, I think whatever you say is it's absolutely 100% right. But probably most of the book that you just mentioned, I never wrote, uh, read it. He's, he is really influenced by those books that you just mentioned. You know, wh why? this is why I, I'm saying like it's not only me, man. He wrote everything. I mean, he, he, he read everything that he can, probably most of the, the books that you are mentioning. And he just put it in the script in a way that is in between lines, but I, I never figured it out that you do. Because you know about those books, you know? Maybe I don't, but the books are there. It, cinema is something that is not only one person, I guess. So it's many people is involved. You mentioned during the screening that your next film will probably also be viewed with, with Fabian. Uh, what is it that, that you like about this collaboration, uh, this exchange of ideas? Well, first of all, that I know that he came from, not from a film school kind of writer. He's more like open and, and, and he, he writes different poems and novels. And, and so he, he's not thinking in terms of production when he, he writes any scene. So he's more like a you know, free in a way. And I like that, so I asked Fabian, uh, can you write something about this in the Amazon or in South Dakota or whatever? And he started bringing ideas that I said, okay, okay, but this is too much, man, come on. But then, little by little, I just 
start taking some lines from here or dialogues from this character or I take this guy I, I do some kind of editing from what I get from him as a writer uh, and it works much more better for me because he's not thinking as a film writer you know he has a, another kind of and most of I mean <coughs> This film is probably, it's absolutely probably impossible for me to do it without his hand, you know. The, the way he wrote is probably in the film. Mm. So, I, 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 my previous films are very like observation films, very minimal, people walking from here to there. And then, I can manipulate a little bit the, the editing in order to make you feel that something else is going on. But that something else that is going on is probably made by you and me together more than you, you know. If you don't put some 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 of your time of sensibility or some of your questions about your life and the life that you see in front of your eyes, the film is not complete. You know? That's why my three brothers don't like my films because they, they have no patience, you know, so this, you know, this is not a film. Get out, get out from our house. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Hello, and thank you for the film. So, this is a tricky question, okay? A very tricky question, and I... No more than one, okay? Okay, no, just one, I promise, okay? okay? It's, do you think that we will be watching your film without Vigo Mortensen on the screen? I mean, you don't have any fear at all that we are watching you because of him and not because of your sense of aesthetics on the screen? Okay, it is not a rhetoric If question. you want the money back, we can give you the money back. No, no, I have been <laughs> okay. invited to uh, Now I go to the other part okay. of the tricky it, thing. It is, it's just because I, I, I was thinking on a photograph uh, 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 that was taking pictures of his mother dying, okay? He put all the attention on the subject not on the picture. We are looking the subject, not the static moment of the subject. Mm. So I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say here. Okay, maybe we are... Yeah. I don't know, I didn't even know that Viggo Mortensen was on the screen when I was invited to, to be here tonight. Okay? okay, so say, please, pronounce your question again. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to translate that into Spanish, maybe? ¿Crees que estaríamos observando tu película sin Vigo Mortensen en la pantalla? Es just as simple okay. as that. Well, it depends. Uh, I think I can. When I was starting thinking about this idea, my idea was first of all, Vigo Mortensen is is uh, one of exceed the world of, about acting. He's more than I, an mm -hmm. actor, hundred ways. And I was uh, super like uh, happy about thinking about having him on a film. If I thought Viggo Mortensen can bring some of the audience of Lord of the Rings to this film, I thought about that. It didn't work at all. If I think that uh, this film can make with another actor from Denmark, probably yes, but not with me, with someone else. Because I really feel that I really want to make this film with Vigo. And I wait for him like for more than three years and finally he said yes. And I say Vigo because he has a strong relationship with Argentina, with Fabian, which is the writer, uh, with... Uh, he can communicate in a better way with me. I cannot talk in, in another language than in Spanish in, in in terms about working. It probably is, is too. Just, I don't want to do, have that that kind of experience. Maybe now I can, but I, I don't know if I want. But Vigo, I th think that I thought in Vigo in terms of like a, more like a, like a, as I treat my other non actors or. I, I thought about him as a, as a person. No, I mean I know he's a, 
uh, Oscar nominé and all that thing, but uh, I thought he was the right people for the for the character that I that I wrote. You know, he's more into the bones of the characters that I wrote. So not any other actor that will not understand. Okay, what am I doing here? Tell me the lines. Okay, he, I think he 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 really helped me and the other actors and the girl. <coughs> and the Danish accent and, and more than anyone. So I think he was the really right one to do this. In terms of any other terms like, uh, I don't know, which can it be? Don't know. But for me it was uh, really important to, to be here as a main character. I don't know if I give you an answer. Okay, so, so let, let it like that, you know. let it be like this. Thank you. you don't need an answer. Exactly. I don't need an answer. You don't need a question. We all don't need an answer. <laughs> Someone else has a question or a remark? Eh, son picaros ustedes. Uh, I wrote, you wrote, uh, or you said about Victor Erice in yes. this program, yeah. that you mentioned that he makes very few films, and then you say perhaps it's a good idea to only make necessary films. When do you know when a film is a necessary film? That's a, that's a good question. When you cannot, <laughs> I mean, you can take your time, but every day of your life think about the film, the same film. I mean, the last this film was made in I don't know 2014. I don't know four years <coughs> ago. I mean, probably the next film, if I'm lucky, it, it will be in the next two years finish. If I'm lucky again, but there is not a morning that I don't think about this guy that I don't even have the face of him walking in the in the in the forest in the Amazon. It's 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 a it's a kind of a blurry image that I have. Guy walking in the Amazon. Guy, you know. It's like that. And I say, I don't know, man. Should, should I see any other images? I don't. Or this guy comparing this guy from the Amazon with this Indian dying in South Dakota. I I don't. I need to compare them. I need to make connect to make you me as the first audience. I need to create a connection between these Indians from U.S. and these Indians from South America. Do I know why? No. But do I need to spend my energy in that images, ideas, connection, project, emails, faxes, telephone calls, uh, WhatsApp, uh, you know? That's the way I... I think Vigo is going to direct his first film in the next January. And he, he, he just sent me a post for, uh, like a month ago or something and said, Lisandro, it's very difficult for me to get the money from my film. Every time that I am getting hurt, I think, who the fuck, like that, who the fuck is going to see my film by Vigo Mortensen? But you know what? I don't care shit. I will do it like you and I will do my film as I want. <laughs> I answer him. And you know why? Because you need it. Is that an answer? <laughs> if you need to, to get money, don't think about films. <laughs> Do something else, you know? If you need some other recognition, that's not my case, but you know? Yes, what you're saying is all the films you make are necessary for you. Yes. But you can't say for somebody else what is a necessary film. Not for my brothers, that's oh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? It's necessary. It's, it's enough, no? I think it's really enough. Maybe it's a, it's good, otherwise I will scream to my wife or my kids. I feel good making this, something that I really like. I will not be, feel that fr frustrated, you know? And I, I, been, I have been lucky so far, so... Yeah, I don't think in this... I don't know if is that the direction that you are pronounced here that sh I sh I need to do something to the other one, you know. For example, the first film I made, like La Libertad o Los Muertos, after I finished the the, the university of film, 
I was kind of uh, not even guilty, far far from that. But uh, I I used the, f the 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 film itself to create the film as an excuse to meet people that I really want to meet, like people who live very isolated, microphones and lenses in places where I never have been. That was my 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 goal. Then my goal is changing, you know, like like everything. But uh, at that time, maybe I thought, uh, or I was thinking, okay, I, need, I have a compromise with these people that nobody see. But actually, then I realized that I didn't make the films to, to show those people to any other audience. I need to meet them, those guys, to feel better as a filmmaker or person or whatever. Maybe it's, a, it's un poco egoista, you know, but uh, it's the way it is. Someone else? <clears throat> In the back. Hello, I have actually two short questions. Okay. The first one is because you, the main actor from La Libertad is also in this movie, I understood. Yeah. How did I recognize him or who is it? It's one on the of, it's the Indian who is still the horse to be uh, All right, <laughs> good for him. And uh, the second one is, it's a little bit related to the question about necessity. In Fantasma, you bring him into a cinematic in Buenos Aires, I understand. Is that a necessity because he didn't know about movies that he wanted to bring him there? No. I just I just thought after, after we finished with Ilse, who is besides you, Los Muertos, I just thought, okay, now I feel after I finish my second film, because the first film can be like a lucky strike, but the, the second, if you are lucky enough again, it means like you can be like, a, or you can say something about yourself like you are a filmmaker or whatever or you are trying to be a filmmaker because you already made two films but then I started to realize okay who I own you who, who I own this feeling about me about feeling like I am a filmmaker one is the main actor of La Libertad and the other one is Argentino so I thought okay the best way to say thanks to those guys is to make a film again, but then I will bring them to my place where I start all my knowledge about cinema, which is in the Cinematic, and it's the place where I is, uh, release my films in Buenos Aires. The, and that was the main idea. I need to work again with those guys, but so I thought, okay, why if you both don't you came to my city? to my place. I've been in your place, now you came to my place. And we just, with any excuse, we do something together anymore. And it was the best way for me to say, okay, goodbye, that was it. I feel glad about that. And now I don't know what is coming, what is coming next. That was the, the idea. Again, it, it was just about me, man. <laughs> <laughs> more questions, more remarks? Hello. Um, can you tell something about the general aesthetics of the image? It was super beautiful again. Well, I only saw one other film by you, Los Muertos, here. But here, um, this movie, I think it was shot on Kodak film stock and then made a DCP out of it. Yes. It's, can you tell about this process, please? I, 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 we always showed in 35 because when I when I was in the film school we learned in 35 and 16 there was not video so I get that kind of education if you, if you can say it that way so we choose to still work in 35 with Timo even if Timo just told me okay Lisandro it's more or less the same you will not notice but okay, but maybe you are right, probably, absolutely, you are right, because you have much more experience than I, but in the, in the rigor, rigor, I don't know if it's in the, uh, okay, it's the same, of the shooting is completely different for me, you know. Once you, you push the play button in the, in the 35 millimeter camera, people pay attention. I pay attention. The actors pay attention because it's four minutes and that was it. 
you cannot make that scene like 30 times because it's kind of more expensive. And even because we, we are shooting like in national parks, far away from the labs and everything, and it takes like more than four days to receive the image back and to be sh sure that what you shoot is good. So everybody pay more attention, I, even if if the quality of the images would be the same or not, which I think is not the same, uh, I feel more comfortable shooting still in 35. I know that probably my next film is not going to be in 35, but I don't know. If I can manage to still shoot in 35, I will do it. And because you, I saw, is that the, the answer? Is that an answer? Yes. Because I saw your 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 hands doing like a like a like a referee football thing like the bar. You do like this, no? Okay, but probably you were talking about the format, no? The radio of the of the film. We we just frame everything with Timo for one eighty five, and then you know which is uh, yeah 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 okay. But let me say, let me say. We frame everything and we compose every image for 185. But then I start editing and the people from the lab, just when they develop the film and make the transfer to video, they put the window, the mask, in the wrong place. So sometimes Vigo's face was like this mm -hmm. and the other times it was like that. And I get uh, kind of mad about that because it takes four days and we wasn't sure about what we shot. And then I talk to the lab and say, okay, just can you send it to me like full frame image? Just make it make it the trumpet full frame. And I start editing the whole film in full frame. It's the same frame that you just saw because then I realized like, well, maybe it's not that bad. Eh? And I start, I get used to, and it, it, it kind of framing refers to other kind of other period of cinema. <laughs> and you probably will see it with another pers perspective or point of view than if you put like super scope and you wait for Bigo with a gun, shot the Indians, you know, it's more like an action film. As I, so I thought maybe if I put it in the other way around, you are not going to be expecting for this an action movie. And it, it works. I mean, at the at the beginning, Timo told me, "Okay, Alessandro, you should you should tell me that before." But uh, then we reframe some of the shots and. And I and I thought it is more like it's better for the film to have this frame than other. Yeah, it asks for a very different involvement of the spectator also because the the tension with the uh, with off space is, is is very different. It's a kind of it adds drama to the off space uh, uh, to what happens outside of the the screen. Let's say. Oh, no, no, because it was in previous in previous films you you, you tend you tend to let the camera wander away and eh, to put the focus on the environment. Uh, it's it's in Los Muertos the case. It's even La Libertad moments that the camera really wanders away from the characters. But here the focus on the environment happens when uh, when the characters leave the frame and and you just linger on that empty space yeah that's a it's a kind of, of something that i have is uh, in me that i, I <coughs> prefer to to start and to finish every every shot with an empty frame so it's better for me to to choose the rhythm of the rhythm of the film on the editing so uh, i always prefer to to start and sometimes i need i need some time to 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 finish my observation on that frame to pass to the next one, mm. but uh, but in this case with Timo, who 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 came from more classical way of telling, you know, from Aki's films, and he's more like a plano y contraplano and big big shot and everything, which at the at the point in at the start point, I didn't get it that way, but then it was good also for Vigo because Vigo many times mentioned, why don't you make another shot just to cover it? You don't have to use it, Lissandro, you are the same guy. It's, you are not going to lose anything, but just put it just to protect the film yeah. in case you need to edit. And I thought, uh, I learned from that, you know, mm. from that kind of narrative way of telling. Anyone else? <clears throat> no? Okay. 
in which case, thank you, Lisandro. Lisandro okay. will also be here in the coming days. Uh, there will be a kind of study day tomorrow. Yeah, um, and it's really, it will be my pleasure to see some of you tomorrow, past tomorrow, because uh, I just came from a long way just to see you. So <laughs> let's have a drink, okay? <laughs> and he will present it and introduce some films of his Carte Blanche program also in the coming days. So please uh, join us. And indeed, join us for a drink now uh, in, the, in the hall. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.